1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, 24 minutes before 11 o'clock on my iPad. I have a, uh, a flight simulator game, Robin, or program, whatever, oh, okay. you, whatever you call it. And I have tried to fly virtually uh-huh. under the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Okay. I am not good at this. Oh. But our next guest, perhaps, <laughs> can tell us stories about flying under the bridges over the East River. And with not with virtual, but with a real real airplane. Uh, uh, Thiesa Tui is a journalist who contributed to five daily newspapers and the Associated Press. She is the daughter of, of her namesake. Her mom's name was Thiesa also, and a pioneering pilot who flew an old World War One Jenny with an OX-5 engine. I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just reading. Um, Thiesa Tui is also an historian, a researcher, and her book is called Flying Jenny. If you're looking at the... Uh, the uh, streaming video thing we're doing. Uh, she's not in the studio, so I have a, a picture of the cover of her book that I got off of Amazon. Uh, Flying Jenny. It is a novel, but we're going to learn a little bit about um, Thiesa and her mom and about flying and, and, of course, the novel. Good morning, Thiesa. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Where are you? Where are you calling from? Um, I'm at my home in New York. All right. In Manhattan. All right. Well, thank you for being on the air with us today. Did Did you fly under the East River bridges, or did your mom? <laughs> who, who, who did that? No. <laughs> Neither one of us. Neither one Neither of you. Neither one of us. Oh, okay. Okay. No. 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 That That stunt was actually performed um, by a teenage girl named Eleanor Smith. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, she took off from Roosevelt Field, and this happened. It will be ninety years ago in October. Oh, wow. How yeah, many, how, so many bridges, she was, how many bridges crossed the East River back in those days? Four. There's okay. four. Well, they still are. <laughs> the same, same four. four are still oh, okay. there. The Manhattan, the Williamsburg, uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, and the uh, Queensboro Bridge. Queensboro Bridge, yeah, yeah. And there's one right after another, and this young woman flew under them, which was an incredible feat. Oh. No one's ever done it before or since. So wow. what, is, what is the connection between her and your mom? Um, none really. Uh, I used her. I I used her her stunt uh, to give it to a fictional character. Ah, the, the, okay. It's a, this book is totally is is historically accurate. Everything in it actually happened, but the characters are all fictional. So it was a question of, of taking history and explaining it through some fictional characters. I see. Okay. That helps me understand a little bit of what I was reading earlier. So did you did the idea stem from an obituary that you read? Um <laughs> It, actually, it did, but it wasn't an obituary of, of Eleanor Smith. Uh, it was obituary of the woman who wrote Gentleman's Agreement. Um, her name was Laura Hobson. Uh-huh. And um, I, I happened to read a story about her, and I decided that I wanted to kind of make a contrast between two types of women who existed in the late uh, 1920s and compare what their lives were like because there were women doing stuff back in 1929. It, you know, it's not like women have been just totally oppressed I know, forever. I know, and it, it is interesting to, to hear these stories because we, uh, we're we still struggling with this. We're still, having, sure, we're still sure. having a hard time accepting women in things that we don't think women should be doing. Uh, and, and yet there have been uh, trailblazers throughout history. So uh, it's an interesting... P- per predicament, I suppose, that we put ourselves in, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, we de- we do. <laughs> this is part of my point. We do need to look at history and see that women who really had an idea or something they really wanted to do um, could go ahead and do it. I'm the the first powder puff derby was in 1929. That's why I chose the year 1929 because it was the first time that women were allowed into the transcontinental air race. And uh, there were a bunch of uh, women, I think 19 of them, who started out in Santa Monica and flew to Cleveland in this race to see 
um, you know, who would be the winner. And they were fantastic flyers. Uh, They were most of them flying in open cockpit planes. The woman that actually won the race uh, referred to it as the sunbur- sunburn derby. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, so, I bet I can see yeah. that. Yeah, and yeah, uh, they were in they were in open cockpits. Uh, they went through rain and sun and all sorts. It took them nine days. I mean, wow. uh, the, you know, there were no lights on the airfields. Um, this is one of the things that, to me at least, so much fun about the book is to see how much. Air transport has changed in in a relatively short period of time. Um, as I said, Eleanor Smith did this stunt uh, 90 years ago, yeah, flying yeah. under flying under the bridges. Now, my mother had a pilot's license at that time, but she wasn't she wasn't uh, a stunt flyer, and she certainly wasn't um, doing the kind of things that Eleanor Smith was doing. But needless to say, I grew up on stories of of old the old days of flying. So so that's where I got the idea to use a woman pilot and um, a female journalist from from Manhattan who was working for a tabloid. And so there was a tremendous conflict between these two women because. They came from such completely different backgrounds. They they couldn't have been right. more different. Now you yourself are a journalist. Do you also have a pilot's license? No, no. I don't. Okay. I don't. <laughs> I'm not a. I, I'm I'm the journalist in the situation, and my you know. What do you? I'm not anything like the character uh, in the journalist in the book. And my mother is not very much. Wasn't very much like the the pilot character oh, okay. in the book, but I knew both milieus from one from my mother and one from myself. Uh, I, be, I was in journalism for a long time, one of the first women doing this and one of the first women doing that, and that's kind of where I got the idea to... Yeah. Um, Because I knew what, you know, I knew what it was like in journalism for women. I was like the first woman assistant city editor at the Detroit News many years ago. And did being a woman give you different challenges, fair or unfair, that that a man would have? Um, You know, that's hard. That's a little hard to say because I was a product myself of that that (laughs) same generation. So when I got turned down for one job because I was a woman, I just went on and and, uh, tried for another one. And I also, believe it or not, was at the right place and the right time several different times and got jobs because I was a woman. Uh, because the Newsday, for example, which is a large paper on Long Island, uh, had a suit against them, a uh, women's suit against them. So they scoured the country looking for women who had some pretty good professional experience to recruit them to get this suit off their back. Ah, so, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the, so the, it, it cut both, yeah, it cut both ways. And the family seems to be a third character in the book, especially your newspaper reporter, Laura Bailey. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say, her family? Uh, yeah, the the family seems to be a third character in the book when you oh, talk yeah. about Laura Bailey and her dad. Right, right. No, that was wonderful fun, too, doing the research on that. Um, she came from a, a very uh, bohemian uh, parent. She didn't even know who her father was, and her, her mother was a, a writer and a very bohemian, free love believing character uh, in Greenwich Village in the teens. And and that scene was just so much fun to, um, to research. Um, one of the things I did was set up uh, the character of Edna St. Vincent Millay, the poet. Uh, I did a lot of research on her and and made her a character uh, in the book. You know, a true mm-hmm. <laughs> a true character yeah. in the book. And the <laughs> characteristics are all. She played jacks with with my character Laura, my fictional character Laura, because Edna St. Vincent Millay did those very kinds of things. She got along well with children. Um, but she was, you know, a very bohemian avant-garde, but very well-known poet at the time. 
Thea Satui is our guest. Her book is called Flying Jenny. It is a novel, but there's so many sub-stories uh, with this one. I wanted to make sure we had uh, Thea on for a, a good long interview. A lot of times with novelists, we'll only do like 10 minutes because there's a story, and I don't want to give too much away for fear that p- people then wouldn't buy the book. But in your case, you've got so such an interesting backstory yourself, uh, not to mention the, the backstory behind the characters in the book. Yeah, well, thank you very much, and I think that's that's sort of true. I I did a lot of I've had a lot of different jobs. I worked for five different daily newspapers, and also for the Associated Press. But the the I love it, what you're saying about the story because yeah. the story was just so much fun, so much fun for me to write to to find all these various characters. Yeah, and. Um, I did an awful lot of research. It doesn't seem blatant, but I'm wondering if there's maybe a subtle attempt on your part to to make a statement about um, women's ability to be to, to do anything that a man can do is that is that part of oh absolutely it, it, yeah oh <laughs> you're right on there yes absolutely this was um, this was kind of my idea to to uh, express the idea that that women were doing things. A long time ago, that it, the doors there were doors were not totally closed to them, and my characters always seem to be defined by uh, reviewers or whatever as funky. <laughs> you know, they oh really? <laughs> get out and, yeah, they get out and uh, do what they want. I my earlier novel was about a woman war correspondent during the Vietnam War, and. Uh, this was it was kind of the same type of thing um uh women journalists there were very very few of them in vietnam and most of them had to go there on their own and pay their own way uh very few news organizations would send a woman um actually post a woman uh the fir- the associated press for example the first woman that they posted to saigon to the saigon bureau was not till 1972 and uh, my book is set during the tet offensive in 1968 so i've been running around doing that sort of thing for a long time so let me let me, um, let me allow to encourage women to see that there are things out there that they can do if they oh, just yeah. kind of I mean, put their shoulder to it. I mean, in, in the aviation world, obviously, Amelia Earhart comes to mind. But even in more recent times, uh, the, the woman pilot that successfully landed that plane that had a, a, an engine blow and, and the window came right. out. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. But, yeah, but, no, I mean, but I think why th- can't a woman do it? There's no reason, I, you know. I, I, I know, but you know, if you listen to those news stories, everybody was making a point oh, yeah. to say she was oh, a woman. Yeah. And... and and yeah, it was almost yeah. as if they were surprised that she was able to do that. And, and I think that's maybe what you're trying to level the playing field with, is to stop being surprised that you, you ladies can do what we can do. Right. Right. No, no, they're, you know, and it's becoming more and more that way. Women are firemen, women are, you know. I mean, there's a woman in the Senate that lost her legs in Vietnam and then brought her baby into the yeah, Senate yeah. floor a few yeah. weeks mm-hmm. ago. So. Yeah. And uh, your two characters still have their uh, feminine side about them. They're not masculine. Uh, yeah, yeah. I that's that's a question that sort of startles me. I mean, they're just you know they're women, and women mm-hmm. are different from men. For crying out loud! I mean, we all know that. Crying out loud! Thank, thank goodness. That's Thiesa, right. Thiesa, I, I, I keep the phone lines open. That means our listeners often will call in, and you have a call. Do you want to take it? Sure. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting. You're on the air with Thiesa Tui. Yes, good morning. Good morning, uh, I'm Jacqueline Cochran, uh, uh, first woman to fly supersonic. And she operated her own cosmetics business uh, at, at around the same time. Wow. Um, absolutely right. And You're absolutely right. And I think I'm not, I may be wrong, but I do believe that she uh, entered the Powder Puff Derby uh, some years after 1929. Yes, wow. yes, she, uh, in the 1930s, yeah. Um, and uh, 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 Pancho Barnes uh, ran a flying school in Hawaii around the time of the Pearl Harbor attack. Wow. Um, 
And uh, 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 the East River Bridge thing was also done by Paul Mance uh, <laughs> for the film. Uh, uh, he, he, re- he flew the B-25 camera plane that was filming the, uh, the This Is Cinerama travelogue, and he oh. flew under the East River Bridges. It's, it's on film. <laughs> oh, neat. You have to look that up. Thank you for the call. Yeah. The AC, yeah, I, I obviously I have a, a fan out there who's uh, familiar with some of the things we're talking about. Right, right, yeah. Jackie Cochran was was a very well known pilot, you know, quite some number of years ago. But well after, well after my character uh, Jenny Flynn. Uh, in the press material, it was pointed out that. Uh uh, your namesake flew an old World War One Jenny with an OX-5 engine. Was that the top-of-the-line engine in its day? You know, I, <laughs> I hate to admit, I don't exactly know what the significance of that was, but not too long before my mother died, um, she was visited by an old friend of hers that had been a pilot during those days too and they both were very excitedly talking about the fact that some organization or club had been started up for old time pilots and the only way you would be eligible was if you had flown an OX-5 engine. Oh, really? Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so that was some that was some great uh honor as far as she was concerned that she would have been eligible for this rather obscure kind of uh, situation so um, at one point I looked that up and I must tell you that I've just sort of forgotten I think I think in point of fact that um, the Jenny at some point or maybe all along had an OX5 engine I uh, love your I uh, love your uh, po- publicity photo. I mean, you looked just so great, like in total control, sitting on a trolley. I just, I just think that is a <laughs> wonderful photo. I love that. Yeah, look. I like that one too. Yeah, yeah. Everybody gets a kick out of that. You know, that was taken on the streetcar named Desire. <laughs> really? In New Orleans. Yeah, I think they've changed the name of that streetcar now, but it's definitely the old streetcar named Desire that um, goes into the Garden District from downtown uh, New Orleans. Uh, I was there for, uh, I guess, a month, uh, several years ago at Mardi Gras time, and uh, different friends came to stay for like a week at a time, and my writer's group came down there. We were all getting on the... We were all climbing on the famous streetcar named Desire, and somehow I just happened to be first, and somehow whoever was right behind me took a picture of me as I just took my seat on the streetcar. We were there where the streetcar begins at the terminus to go into the Garden District. And, And one of the other women in the group said... Wow, that's a fabulous picture. That's got to be your next. That's got to be the next uh, picture on your next book. The ah. picture on your next book. And it, so uh, that's how that. That was totally one of those uh, uh, spontaneous, not thought out. <laughs> on your just a snapshot. On, on your website, um, you have that picture, and right next to it, a picture on that same trolley. It looks like with other ladies. Are you are you part of a, a, a writers group? Uh, yeah, I've been in different groups at different times. Um, that that particular uh, that particular bunch of ladies were all uh, members of a of a group with Kaylee Jones, who is a she's actually as you'll see is she has the imprint. Uh, she's the editor of Flying Jenny. Ah, okay, okay, and. Uh, I'm sorry, I was just going to say that, that Kaylee has been teaching writing for quite some time, and she's pretty well known. She's written a lot of books herself. I love the titles of your chapters. It sets up the reader for what's coming on, and some are very, very emotional. Others are very adventurous. Oh, that's fun. I'm glad that I'm glad that you noticed that and like it. I don't know why. I, I guess that's just my old newspaper instinct is to put a headline on every story somehow. Um, I, I love putting those headlines on the or chapter titles. I, I just I always do that with with all of my books. I get a kick out of it. So mm. 
glad you noticed what, it. What part of New York do you live in? Um, I live uh, in a section that's called Turtle Bay. It's quite near the UN. I'm about two oh, okay. blocks. Okay. Two blocks from the UN, nice. uh, right in in Midtown. There are so many neighborhoods I don't know the names of. I never heard of Turtle Bay. That's <laughs> yeah. No, I I was I started to say it's kind of it's kind of an obscure name, but it's um, it's just this. Actually, apparently there was a, there's some historical significance to that. There was <laughs> some kind of dump in the water or something, and all the turtles were hanging out there. Oh, right. Really? But it's a yeah, it's a. It's a very, it's a nice, pretty quiet neighborhood. Um, A couple blocks away uh, is a section where both Stephen Sondheim and uh, Catherine Hepburn lived at one time. Nice. An an area where there's there's houses, uh, brownstones all up and and around, going like around a corner with with a big garden in the middle. Every decade seems to have their own stamp, and the stamp of like the 1920s is great because you've got the the flappers and the flagpole sitters, and then you've got the women that fly the planes, and I just think that is absolutely a fabulous contrast. Yeah, it, it. it really, you know, it it was a fun time, and <clears throat> that that Powder Puff Derby was just an amazing. Well, first of all, Will Rogers is the one who gave it the name Powder Puff Derby. It was actually, you know, the Women's Continental Air Race or oh, Transcontinental Air Race or something like that, and. Uh, uh, Will Rogers, who was, uh, you know, a big humorist at the time, but was very interested in flying. And as a matter of fact, he, if Will Rogers was killed in a in a crash with Wiley Post. Uh, they were trying to do a round-the-world trip. So that's how interested Will Rogers was in flying, that he was, he was in a... Uh, in a flight with with Wiley Post, wow. who was who had done some other transcontinental flights, uh, but l- let me uh, yeah? spell your name for our listeners. I just went to your website and I want them to go there as well. T H E A S A is Theasa, and then Tui is T U O. H Y T U O H Y. If you go to theasatui dot com, you'll see you have an amazing uh, other other works on, on your site that I wasn't even familiar with till just now when you were talking. Um, I found the book on Amazon. I have a copy of the book. If I have and it's a, signed too. Oh, it is signed. It is signed. Yes. Call me if you want the book that was signed, and I'll, I'll leave it for you. <laughs> Th- Theasa, so you, did you know you signed it? Well, I. <laughs> I, you know, I've signed books, so I, I don't, I don't know how you got a hold of of, of that one. I don't know who probably sent PJ. it to you. PJ probably sent it. Oh, PJ sent it. Well, yeah. maybe it, it probably yeah that yeah. that uh, my uh, my publisher sent her a, a few signed <laughs> copies for special people like you. This has been just a wonderful interview. You guys have read the book and know all about it and it's fun for me to talk about the book it yes. really is because yes. i had so much fun writing it and i do love the picture of your mom yeah me too me that's too. a wonderful yeah photo. isn't that well the the description of jenny is is basically based on that picture um that that picture ran in the daily oklahoma at one point many many years ago uh, when someone was doing a doing a story on on flying and and of course they always like to uh, take pictures of my mom or uh, include her in very in tours the government would sponsor uh, various tours around the country really? to get people interested in. Yeah, wow. I mean the government wow. was really promoting flying, wow. uh, trying to get people to do that. Theasa, and you cannot be afraid of it. You're a joy <laughs> to talk to. What an enjoyable conversation! Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Well, thank you. This has been swell. I love it. Sure. I love talking about the book. Hopefully, we get to meet you one of these days. We're, Robin and I are oh. up in New York now and then, and uh, we'd love to meet you. Well, I would love that, too. You've got my phone number and all my uh, bona fides, I'm right. sure. So <laughs> right, right, right. Thank get in touch when you can. Thank you, Theasa. And I hope I'm in Florida at some point. If you are, stop by. Come in the studio. 
I will. I'd love to. All right. Thank you so much, you're, Larry. It was great. You're welcome. We will be right back. This is the Source WOCA Ocala. Want some fun tips for the summer on and off-road travel? Tune in on Monday, the 25th, to AM Ocala Live at 8.20 AM when Claudia Lombana will give us information about what to check for wear and tear on tires to protect your pocketbook and safety, planning a trip, emergency kits, and how to prepare for the unexpected. So be sure to listen. Again, that will be at 8.20 AM on Monday, the 25th, right here on AM Ocala Live. We want you to be safe, have fun, and enjoy the journey. All from the source, WOCA. Insurance needs got you worried. Clifford Insurance has you covered with over 25 premium carriers. Family owned and operated.